a warm welcome to dear viewers in today's topic which is ascent of sap. In this topic we will discuss about the absorption of water by the roots from the soil, the path of water from the roots to the aerial parts of the plant, what is ascent of sap, various theories regarding the mechanism of ascent of sap, forces that drive the ascent of sap and some physical challenges of the xylem transport of water in trees. Dear students, we know that water plays an important role in plant life because it provides the medium for most of the biochemical processes in the plant body. For making 1 gram of organic matter, plants absorb approximately 500 grams of water through roots, which is transported through the plant body and is lost to the atmosphere by means of transpiration. Water taken by the roots contains dissolved ingredients, minerals in it and is hence called sap. The upward movement of water from the xylem terminals in the root towards the stem branches and their leaves is called ascent of sap or translocation of water. The movement of water sometimes covers a distance of more than 100 meters as in case of the tallest trees like sequoia sempervirens in California and eucalyptus regans in Australia. Therefore, it becomes evident that water goes up such heights due to some driving forces other than that of the atmospheric pressure which hardly supports a column of water up to 34 feet or 10.3 meters. So, a challenge was posed to the plant physiologists to know the mechanism of water movement to the tall trees. As we know that water absorption is of two types namely active absorption and passive absorption. Active absorption it is the absorption of water due to the forces present in the root living cells in active metabolic conditions are essential for this process. It has been learned that even from hypertonic solutions auxins are able to enhance water absorption while respiratory inhibitors reduce the same. Therefore, energy from respiration is involved in the active absorption. Osmosis is the main driving force for water absorption from the soil to the root tissues. Passage of water from the living cells to the xylem channels can occur by accumulation of sugars or salts in the tracheary elements of xylem. By development of bioelectric potential and by active pumping of water by surrounding living cells into the tracheary elements. Therefore, active absorption occurs at the cost of energy. Now, passive absorption, the force for this type of absorption originates in the aerial parts of the plant due to transpiration and the root system does not play a significant role. Due to rapid transpiration, there occurs a progressive drop in water potential abbreviated as psi from soil to the atmosphere. Therefore, water potential difference develops between the root and the soil and thus water moves in the root tissue. So, there is no expenditure of energy and the root cells play only a passive role as they pave the path for water movement. Before knowing the mechanism of ascent of sap, it becomes imperative to know the path of water across the plant parts as the water moves from the soil to, to the roots 
and then from roots to the aerial parts of the plant, path of water across the roots, water moves centripetally across the root cortex to the steel in response to a potential gradient. The initial movement is across the epidermal layer of the root with its associated root hairs and then through the cortex. There are three possible pathways of water transport across the root from epidermis to cortex. They are the apoplast pathway through the cell walls. It is the movement of water from root hair to xylem through the walls of intervening cells without crossing any membrane or cytoplasm. It is called apoplastic pathway of water absorption. Second is symplast pathway through the cytoplasm via plasmodismata. The movement of water occurs through the cytoplasm of the adjacent cells via plasmodismata. Then third, the transmembrane pathway through the membranes, cytoplasm and vacuoles. It is the movement of water from one cell to another and water crosses two membranes while entering and exiting the cells. It also involves the transport across the tonoplast. The path through the cell wall is considered to be the primary path of water movement across the cortex. However, the pathway is blocked across the endoderms because of the presence of Casparian strips. Casparian strips is a band of radial cell walls in the endoderms impregnated with subarin. Thus, forces the water and solutes to cross the endoderms through symplastic and transmembrane pathways. However, in certain cases, the endodermis possesses less subarized cells called passage cells which keep the apoplastic pathway uninterrupted. After crossing the endoderms, water enters into vascular tissues through a layer of living cells called parasitic with a little or no resistance. Now, path of water across the aerial parts of the plant. This is a well known fact that longitudinal movement of water takes place predominantly through the xylem which is evidenced from stain tests and ringing experiments. When a ring of tissues external to the xylem is removed from the stem, the flow of water is not immediately stopped. Contrary to this, if a section of xylem is removed, leaving the other tissues intact, ascent of sap is impure. This can be also proved when solutions labeled with soluble dyes, radioactive solutes or water containing heavy hydrogen or heavy oxygen are supplied to the plants, the same are detected from the tracheary elements of roots and stem. Similarly, if the cut end of a flowering twig is dipped in eosine solution, its flowers turn red and the stem transverse sections of the same twig show that only xylem vessels stay red. The above experiments unequivocally prove that xylem elements are mainly responsible for the upward movement of water. Among the four xylem elements, tracheids and vessels form a kind of continuous tubular system running from the root system to aerial branch. The end to end association of tracheary elements with their disintegrated walls provide tubular and network of channels for the movement of water. In smaller plants, xylem constitutes the longest part of the pathway of water transport and may be about 95.5% and even more in tall trees. 
the specialized anatomy of the xylem enables greater efficiency of water transport. There are two important types of tracheary elements in the xylem, namely tracheids and vessels. Vessel elements are found only in angiosperms and tracheids are present in both angiosperms and gymnosperms. Since the maturation of the tracheids and vessels is also accompanied by the death of the cells, therefore no membranes or organelles are left behind in the water conducting cells, rather cells with lignified walls enclosing hollow tubes are present for the water flow with a little resistance. Tracheids are more or less elongated, spindle shaped, tubular cells with lignified walls that are arranged in overlapping vertical files. Water flows between tracheids by means of the numerous pits in their lateral walls. Pits are microscopic regions where the secondary wall is absent and the primary wall is thin and porous. Normally, the pits of two bordering cells are adjacent to each other forming a pit pier. Pit piers constitute a low resistance path for water movement between tracheids. The post layer between pit piers consisting of two primary walls and, a mid and middle lamella is called the pit membrane. Pit membranes in tracheids of some species of conifers have a central thickening called torus. The torus acts like a value to close the pit by lodging itself in the circular or oval wall thickenings bordering these pits. Such an arrangement of the tori is an effective way of preventing dangerous gas bubbles from invading neighboring tracheids and overcome the problem of cavitation. Comparing the structure of vessels and tracheids, Vessel elements tend to be shorter and wider than tracheids and have perforated end walls that form a perforation plate at each end of the cell. The perforated end walls allow vessel members to be stacked end to end to form a large conduit called a vessel. However, both tracheids and vessel elements have pits on their lateral walls. The open end walls of the vessels provide a very efficient and low resistance pathway for water movement. The vessel members found at the extreme ends of a vessel lack perforations at the end. Now, mechanism of ascent of sap. A number of theories have been put forward from time to time to explain the mechanism of ascent of sap. Most of these theories are not satisfactory because more than one mechanism may be involved. These theories are divided into three main categories. Number one, vital force theories, root pressure theory, physical force theories. Now, vital force theories the propounders of these theories believe that the ascent of sap is controlled by vital activities of the living cells by their rhythmic changes or pulsatory movements. Two such theories, Vizavis, Gordelwiski's relay pump theory and Bose's pulsatory moment theory were outrightly rejected by many workers on the grounds that there is no relationship between such moments and the rate of water translocation. Root pressure theory. Root pressure is defined as a hydrostatic pressure developed in the tracheary elements of xylem as a result of metabolic activities of roots. Root pressure 
has been observed in several species if a stem of a plant for example, tomato or grape vine is cut near its base and a tube with a mercury nanometer is attached, xylem sap is seen to flow from the roots through the cut end under a considerable pressure. This phenomenon is known as bleeding or exudation. A pressure of 0.5 or 0.6 has been recorded in some herbaceous plant species, but the value does not exceed 0.1 in most of the plant species. Root pressure is seen in most of the plant species when the soil moisture is very high and the rate of transpiration is very low. Therefore, we are able to see droplets of water exuded from openings in tips or edges of grass or strawberry leaves, a process which is called gutation. Under dry atmospheric conditions and low soil moisture, there is no root pressure because the plants are under tension. Root pressure may be a factor of some significance in the ascent of sap in herbaceous plants, but the theory stands rejected because of the reasons that ascent of sap is observed in the plants in which roots are removed. Magnitude of root pressure is too slow to account for the total moment of water in trees as the root pressure does not exceed minus 0.1 megapascals, while a pressure of minus 2 megapascals is required for ascent of sap to tall trees. Third, pressure is not observed in most of the conifers and many other gymnosperms. During summer, root pressure is very low, whereas the transpiration rate is very high. Moreover, the xylem sap remains in a state of tension instead of root pressure. Now, physical force theories. As per these theories, dead cells are responsible for ascent of sap and the mechanism is purely physical. Different physical theories are imbibition theory of sachs, capillary force theory of boom, atmospheric pressure theory and cohesion tension theory. Many of these theories have been rejected by one or the other reason. The only and most widely accepted theory to explain the mechanism of ascent of sap is the cohesion tension theory. This theory is also called as suction force theory or transpiration pull theory. This theory was originally proposed by Henry H. Dixon and John Jolly in 1894 and was supported by a number of workers. That transpiration pull or tension cohesion property of water and hydration of the cell walls are three basic factors responsible for the ascent of sap. Pressure difference or tension as a result of transpiration and created throughout the water column between one end of the stem to other results in bulk flow of water through the xylem. The breaking of water column is prevented between adjacent water molecules by cohesive property and adhesion between water molecules and the cell walls. Therefore, there are three basic elements in cohesion tension theory for ascent of sap that is the driving force, the cohesion of water and the hydration of the cell wall. Now, let us deliberate on these factors one by one. The driving force is the water potential gradient from the soil 
throw the plant to the evaporating surfaces within the leaves. When transpiration takes place from the leaf mesophyll cells, it results in decreased water potentials of the cells, which are in direct contact with the air spaces of the leaf. These cells then absorb water from the nearby cells. The leaf mesophyll cells have to ultimately absorb water from the xylem elements of the veins in order to equate the water potential value. Therefore, the water in the xylem tissue is subjected to a state of tension or negative pressure, which is ultimately transmitted to the root system through the unbroken cone of water inside the stem. As a result, a pressure difference or tension is developed from top to bottom of the plant, which acts as a driving force. This tension acts as a pull, which is called transpiration pull that is responsible for the upward movement of water from the roots to the top of the plant. Hence, a pathway for water from soil through the plant to the atmosphere is formed. This is called soil plant atmosphere continuum and is abbreviated as SPAC. The pressure gradient within the actively transpiring trees range from minus 0.1 to minus 0.5 megapascals. A normal driving force in trees well supplied with water is minus 0.015 megapascals. Thus, a tree of 100 meter height will not require tension lower than minus 1.5 megapascals. Since the rate of transpiration is high as the relative humidity of the air decreases and hence causes a rapid drop in the water potential. But still it would not become a barrier in the water transport. As the soil water seldom has a water potential more negative than minus 1.5 megapascals, therefore the air has not to be very dry in order to develop a steep water potential gradient from the soil through the plant and into the atmosphere. Now, cohesion of water. Water has some special properties that make its transport through the plant body possible. These properties are primarily because of the polarity of the water molecule. These properties are cohesion, adhesion and high tensile strength. Cohesion is the mutual attraction between water molecules as a result of extensive hydrogen bonding. The magnitude of this force is as high as 350 atmospheres. The adhesion is the attraction of the water to a solid surface, for example, cell wall in case of plants. The cohesive property of water keeps the water column in continuity in xylem from root to the top of the tree. This property of water is called high tensile strength and is defined as the maximum force per unit area that a continuous column of water can withstand before breaking. The high tensile strength of water has been demonstrated by holding two separate steel plates together by a thin film of water. The required force to separate the plates has been found to be very high. So, cohesion force is sufficient for the cohesive mechanism of ascent of sap, which is made practicable as a result of the special anatomy of the xylem tissue. Hydration of the cell wall. As we know that water is a molecule with polarity, where the central part of the water molecule has a partial negative charge and the terminal hydrogen bonds have a partial positive charge. 
cell walls have a greater affinity for water molecule. The wall surfaces with their negative charge attract the slightly positive sides of the polar water molecules and this is called hydration. The wall surface which can bind with water is called matrix. The tendency for a matrix to adsorb additional water molecules is called matrix potential. Moreover, there is an attraction between water molecules and the wall of the xylem elements known as adhesion. Water can be held by the hydrophilic wall surfaces with tension of the order of minus 100 megapascals to minus 300 megapascals which is more than sufficient to prevent the removal of water by the gravitational pull. So, from this discussion it becomes evident that cohesion tension theory explains the proper mechanism of the ascent of sap despite the fact that xylem transport faces some physical challenges. The essential features of the theory therefore are number one, the unbreakable column of the water inside the xylem elements. Number second, driving force or pulling force is generated as a result of transpiration from the mesophyll cell surfaces and therefore, putting the water column inside the plant under tension. Number third, the continuum of the water column is maintained as a result of cohesive and adhesive properties of water. Now, physical challenges faced by water transport through xylem, an inward force is transmitted by the water under tension towards the xylem walls under the influence of this tension. The weak cells were likely to collapse. However, due to secondary wall thickenings and lignification of the xylem cells, this problem is overcome. The second problem faced by xylem is that there is an increased tendency of air to be pulled through microscopic pores in the cell walls of the xylem, a process which is called air seeding. Air bubbles can also be formed by the freezing of xylem conduits. This phenomenon of air formation is called cavitation or embolism. Cavitation becomes a barrier in the water transport in the xylem and hence breaks the continuity of the water column. This can lead to the dehydration and death of the leaves. Though plants face this challenge, but they minimize the cavitation as the capillaries in the xylem are interconnected. Besides, the gas bubbles cannot pass through the small pores of the pit membranes and the other possibility to minimize the cavitation is the detouring of water around the blocked point through the neighboring conduits. However, the repairing of the cavitation is still an area of active research. Dear learners, now we are able to understand the absorption of water by the roots and its translocation to aerial parts of the plant. Besides, we learned the mechanism of the ascent of sap and the various driving forces behind this mechanism. Some challenges faced by the water transport inside the plant body also stand discussed. With this, we conclude this topic. Thanks. Thank you.